get this wrong all the time. Businesses really want to be and try to be positioned well. And the salespeople argue, gee, we're not positioned well enough and our brand recognition's not great in the right kind of areas. And whilst all of that makes sense, this is an area where B2B marketing and B2C marketing are fundamentally different. It just doesn't matter what they think about you if they're not. So the most important thing is to make sure that they are thinking about you at all. Now think about this, even a really well-known brand may be known generally, but is it known in each of the categories that they wish to operate? More than often not. So a well-positioned brand is not positioned in all the categories they need to be positioned in. So even a big company with a great brand has a positioning problem. Brand and position are really different things. And so in B2B we need to take a very different approach to those of our consumer cousins. And what I'm going to show you in this blog is how to position a business brand. The first task for a business marketer is therefore to ensure that the brand is firmly positioned in each of the categories that they seek to occupy. And this means that the buyers will always consider the brand amongst the others when making a purchase decision. Only when the brand is absolutely positioned unambiguously in the category so the buyers always think about your brand before or at least as, at the same time as they think about others, only when that's been achieved can we think about conveying our point of difference and bringing our brand forward. For now, we just need to get on the list. And there's two approaches that I'm going to show you today. One is where we're positioning as an outcome in and of itself. And secondly, where we position as a consequence of trying to do something else. I'll give you examples of both of those now. Remember that our buyers are being subjected to messaging from our competitors as well as from us. And so from us we need absolute consistency, clarity, frequency and credibility in everything that we do. Now we're less likely in B2B to use tactics like advertising for that kind of effect. We're more likely to use higher impact but probably narrower, narrower reach tactics like blogging, social media, search certainly, direct mail and direct email, white papers and speaking at seminars whether ours or somebody else's. Some other tactics that might be used for some purpose other than positioning can still play a really important role in positioning the brand in a business market and they need to be carefully managed because of that. Things like proposals, letters, emails, faxes and sales conversations all have an effect on your positioning. These tactics should all be tailored so that they position your brand in each of the key categories that you want to be positioned in. And because buyers believe if they hear from multiple sources, ideally you want them to hear this message from multiple different sources, certainly multiple of yours, but if you can, multiple other third party sources as well. The other approach we can take in B2B is to hijack tactics meant for another purpose and specifically tactics meant to trouble the buyers. For example, we might have built a white paper or offer a webinar or a screen flow. Uh, it could be any number of uh, different tactics that we might use where the purpose of that tactic is to try to get the buyer troubled about the problem that we can solve. But along the way to that tactic, the invitation process, which might be an email, it might be a phone call, it might be a direct mail piece, it might be perhaps even just another web page leading to this tactic. Whatever the invitation piece is that invites the buyer to consume that tactic, whose intent is to trouble, then the invitation process can play a role in the positioning. First prize is they go along and consume that troubling tactic. Second prize is they say, yeah, actually I'm, I'm not troubled about that right now and I'm not even interested in consuming that troubling tactic, but I get that you seem to be really focused on solving that problem and if I ever have it, I'd be sure to call you. So we can certainly have tactics designed just to position, but we can also have tactics designed for some greater purpose, you might say, some purpose further down the buyer's journey. But 
along the way, we can position the brand using those tactics as well. Positioning is just the start of the journey, not the whole journey. We need also to think about two quite distinct audiences. We've got strategic targets, those that we want to be positioned with, whether or not they've begun their journey, because we intend to target them. They're companies that we have identified as a, a valid and attractive target for us. But also behavioural targets, a second group, those who are seeking information and we like them, not necessarily because they meet our notion of who we should be targeting, but because they've already begun their journey and started to show interest in that conversation. And we need tactics for both of those audiences. In a moment or two, I'm going to invite you to take a look at how we do this in Funnel Plan, select the right tactics and build them into a flow. But before we do that, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to um, share with you the conclusion, that is, how do we select the right positioning tactics, and I'm going to invite you to receive more blogs like this one. But let's get to those tactics first. How do we select the right positioning tactics for both our inbound and outbound audiences? We need to start by finding the right categories. Which categories do we actually want to be positioned in? And then we need to think about the market within those categories. How mature is the market for product categories like that? Well, if the market's mature, then you probably do want product categories. But if the market's not mature, then consider problem categories. Groups of companies that might possibly have a solution to that problem. It's quite a different approach. First, we need to make sure that our strategy is rock solid. There's simply no point executing the right tactics to the wrong audience. It sounds kind of obvious, but just don't go down the positioning conversation until you're really confident that you've got the, uh, the strategy sorted and agreed. Now, having done that, we need to think about a couple of elements. Firstly, we've got the question of are we positioned or are we not? Now, if we are positioned, then we probably want to spend 80% of our energy conveying our point of difference. How are we different from the others? But if you're not yet positioned on that list, then you need to take precisely the reverse approach. If you're not yet on the list, looking too different from everybody who's on the list will actually take you off the list again. So, if you're not yet positioned in the category, then spend about 80% of your energy complying with expectations and about 20% of your, your energy being a little different. If you are positioned, then find a unique space that you can own and spend about 80% of your energy making sure that you own that unique space in, within the category. Now, we've also got two audiences. We've got the strategic audience that we definitely want to go out to and we've got a behavioural audience. We didn't know that they were a good prospect, but because they're behaving in the right way, suddenly they've become a really good prospect. For strategic targets, make sure that every single touch point positions you unambiguously in the category. And again, thinking about that compliance or differentiation approach. Am I just trying to look like everybody on the list, or am I trying to be different, depending on whether you're on the list or not yet? That's for your strategic targets. Now for your behavioural targets, and again, you didn't necessarily identify them as a target, but because they're acting in the right way, they're quite attractive to you. For those behavioural targets, think about where they are in their journey at the time that they start to reach out. Are they kind of top of funnel where they're looking for insights and inspiration and ideas and understanding? Then share top of funnel tactics like blogs, you're going to do seminars, you're going to search optimise your blog, you're going to socially share your blog topics, you're going to participate in, in, in social networks, you're going to get involved in conversations on LinkedIn with people. They're good top of funnel positioning tactics. If they're already bottom of funnel before they reach out and they're saying like, I just need a lawyer, for example, if you're selling legal services, um, then you want to make sure that the search terms that you use in that circumstance are going to be product related best lawyer in Melbourne, for example. So think really carefully, where are they in their journey when they reach out? So when you build positioning tactics for your inbound or behavioural targets, think about what's going on for them. Are they thinking about the problem or are they thinking about the product? And you need to match that with your search terms. Well, if you enjoyed this blog, then likely you'd enjoy others. 
Equally, if you've been enjoying these blogs for a while but you have colleagues who haven't, then now might be a great time to share the love. There's a couple of options for you or for them. Uh, there's the twice weekly blog, which obviously comes out twice a week, and uh, that's got the freshest insights. Or Funnel Vision Monthly, which comes out once a month with a collection of our very best blogs. Mathmarketing.com forward slash blog is the place to go for either of those. The third option is to go to YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel where you'll get each of these once a week. Why don't you do that now and then come back and I'll share with you how we do that in Funnel Plan. So here's how we do that in Funnel Plan. Well clearly we're talking about the tactics section of the Funnel Plan and so we're going to take a look at the tactics that have preceded it the find new names tactics and potentially even the interest established tactics and the positioning ones sit in between those because we're trying to get on the list of the buyers. Now we've got both inbound, what I was referring to earlier as behavioural segments, so the, the audience that's shown interest, they're going to come inbound to us and we've got outbound tactics. So let's add, add a business blog with a subscription option We'll search optimise that blog and probably promote it on LinkedIn and we'll speak at our own and some third party conferences. So let's get those tactics in. Now for outbound, and I'm going to mark these using the outbound tag, let's make sure that our, our emails that go out to the blog and our direct mails and telemarketing that um, invite people to the event all position us in the chosen category. We also need to work out which of those buyers are interested in having the conversation at all. How we do that I'll show you on another day. But for now, may your funnel be full and always flowing.